The beaded number line is a great manipulative to use with kindergartners for learning about number, number sense, and computation. The following video offers instructions on how to construct a beaded number line and provides instructional strategies for using this tool to develop the student's skills in counting, counting backwards, adding, and subtracting. This clip is part of an instructional video for grades kindergarten through second that is provided for teachers from the Virginia Department of Education to support the implementation of the 2009 Mathematics Standards of Learning. If you would like to view the whole video on the beaded number line, please go to www.doe.virginia.gov slash instruction slash mathematics slash resources slash videos. The beaded number line is a great manipulative to use for counting, counting backwards, rounding, as well as addition and subtraction. To make a beaded number line, the students need two yards of lanyard string, a key ring or a paper clip, and 50 beads of each color with a total of 100 beads. The students need to double their lanyard string and then put groups of 10 of each color on their string until they count to 100. They need to double knot it at the end so that they don't lose any beads. One of the first activities you're going to want to do with them is have them count the beads on their number line. After they know they have 100 beads on their number line, you want to ask your students if there's another way to count the beads. Some students might count them by twos, some students might count them by fives, but hopefully and ultimately the students will count them by tens until they land on 100. This is also a great tool to use when you want students to identify where a certain number is. For example, if we want to find 30 and then make sure that they can count back from 30. So here would be 30 and then the students can count backwards by ones until they get down to 1. The beaded number line is also a great tool for basic facts. If I wanted my students to figure out 2 plus 3, they could move on, they could find 2 and add on three more to figure out that two plus three equals five. I could also use it for subtraction. If my problem was 11 minus three, we would first find 11, count back three to figure out 11 minus three is equal to eight. Once the students have an understanding of how to count the beads on their number line, another great tool for this is to find where a certain number would be. For example, if I want the students to identify where 12 would be on the number line, many students are going to end up counting by ones until they land on 12. Ultimately, you want your students to be able to identify that 12 is one group of 10 and two more ones. And then they would put their clothespin there to identify 12. If I wanted them to find the number 27, they might know that 27 is made up of two tens and seven more ones. Or they might even say that they know 27 is 3 away from 30, so they'll find 30 and then count back 3 until they find 27. Ultimately, you want your students to always explain to you how they identified where a number is located on their beaded number line.